In this video, I want to say a few words about how the notion of agents that we've introduced in preceding videos and preceding chapters of the book uh, is related to existing software technology, and in particular, objects, as in object-oriented programming. So let's start by reminding ourselves exactly what an object is in the sense of Java or C++ or Smalltalk. So the first important property that an object has is that it encapsulates some state. So the notion of encapsulation is absolutely fundamental to object-oriented programming. What it means is that there is some component of an object, some set of variables within the object, which is only accessible to the object itself. Okay? And this means that other, other uh, objects in the software world can't interact directly with that state. It's hidden away inside an object, it's private to that object. And we indicate the state that we encapsulate in Java by using the keyword private. So an object, object encapsulates some state. One way of describing that is that you can say that an object has some kind of autonomy over its state. It has control over its own state. One idea that was fundamental and very visible in early object-oriented programming languages like Smalltalk, but that which has become a little bit blurred in contemporary object-oriented programming languages like uh, Java, is the notion of message passing. So in Smalltalk, it was very much a first-class idea in the language, the idea that objects communicate by passing messages to one another. And what this idea of message passing has evolved to in modern object-oriented programming languages is the idea of method invocation. But you can think of the idea of a one object invoking a method upon another as sending it a message. And that notion is very explicit, as I say, in languages like Smalltalk. And the third uh, notion that's, that's there in object-oriented programming is the idea that agents can do things. They have some methods. And we can think of those methods, the interface of the object, as being the actions that the object can perform. Okay, so an object, in the sense of object-oriented programming, there is some private state hidden away inside the object which is not directly accessible uh, outside that object. Okay, so an object has autonomy over its state. Uh, it communicates via message passing, and message passing in languages like Java is represented by method invocation. But in languages like Smalltalk, the notion of message passing is very explicit. And then finally, the object has an interface, and the interface defines the actions that the object can perform. So, uh, let's try and consider then uh, how this relates to the uh, notion of an agent. So, the best way of explaining this is as follows. Suppose we have two objects. We have object 01 over here, and object 02 over here. And this guy, object 01, provides some publicly accessible method. That is, within his interface, he has some action uh, that, that, that is available, some service which is available to other objects. So this guy over here, object 02, knows about object 01. He can directly invoke that method uh, upon object 01. So he can send him a message saying, perform that method. So here's the question. Where does the decision lie about whether that method actually gets invoked? Is it with this guy, with this object, or is it with this one? Well, I would argue that the decision about whether to invoke that method lies with the person that invokes it. If this object provides a public method which is available to others, a service which is available publicly, then he has no control over whether that object gets invoked or not. It just does if this guy decides to invoke it. So in that sense, objects are not very autonomous. They have no control over their own, over their own actions in the way that we've been talking about agents having choices about what actions to perform. Uh, think about this in the agent world. Is it the case now if we've got two agents, and uh, let's think about them as being real individuals, about you and me, is it the idea that you, is, do we have the idea that you can directly invoke a method upon me? So suppose you want to try and invoke the buy me a beer method on me. Am I likely to respond to that? Well, I might buy you a beer, I might ask for some money, or I could ask you to, I could say can, if you'll buy me a beer next week. But the point is, I have control over whether or not I actually buy you a beer. So we don't think about agents as invoking methods upon one another. One another. We think about them typically as requesting one another to perform actions. Uh, if we go back to the idea of objects as encapsulating some state, well, similarly, we have the same idea in the agent world. I have some private state, some, some beliefs about how the world is, and it's not the case that you can directly manipulate that state. 
So for the same reason, we think about agents as informing one another of things and not directly manipulating the state that we have. So while objects in have some notion of autonomy, they have some autonomy over their state, they don't really have autonomy over their behaviour. Okay? They provide some public services, and those services can be invoked by anybody who's got a handle on that object. Whereas we think about agents as embodying a stronger notion of autonomy than objects do. So an agent can decide for itself whether or not to perform an action on the request of another. Beyond that, though, we've been talking about uh, agents as being reactive, about being proactive, and about being social. Those, those, those concepts have no parallel in the object-oriented world. They simply don't appear. They're nothing to do with object-oriented programming. Okay? So the, the OO model has nothing to say about being reactive or proactive or social. This doesn't mean, of course, that you can't build those kind of capabilities using object-oriented programming languages. Of course you can, but the point is that the standard object model has nothing to say about them. And then finally, as we described in previous videos and in earlier parts of the book, we think about an agent being in a close coupled loop with its environment, performing this sense, decide, act loop, continually going around this sense, decide, act loop. So, Agents are active entities. They're continually deciding what to do next, what is the next action to perform. Whereas with objects, we think about them more as being service providers. I provide this service and I'm not doing anything until somebody invokes a method on me, tells me to provide that service. Okay, and in, in agents, in contrast, we think of as being active things. So in summary, Agents are autonomous, they embody a stronger notion of autonomy than objects do. Or objects have autonomy over their state, the state that they encapsulate, but we think about agents as having autonomy over their behaviour. We think about agents as having these reactive, proactive and social behaviours that we've talked about previously. Uh, and finally, we think about agents as being active entities, continually deciding what to do next, whereas we think about objects as being essentially passive service providers, waiting to be told what to do. So that, in my view, sums up the main differences between objects and agents.